Season 3 for Multiverses begins at the end of this month, if history is anything to go by, and with a new season brings new hope. Players, at least the ones that have stuck around, even the ones that maybe have left for a little bit, but they're still waiting to see what the future holds, they're still looking, they still have a little bit of hope for something, and well, Season 3 is pretty much going to be the make or break moment for Multiverses, and uh, well, if my two cents are worth anything, I hope the game makes it. But Multiverses Season 3 needs many things to happen and to go right, so here are 10 things Multiverses needs to do for Season 3. In no particular order, starting with number 1... They need to start season three strong, and I mean strong. They need to start off by dropping on day one a brand new character, a brand new stage, and of course the the battle pass. You know, we could be maybe we could even if you really wanted to maybe drop two characters the same day and maybe no stage. But they need to give us some new stuff, and I'm just saying that's for day one. You know. We know the de- uh, the developers have been in the kitchen. We know they've been cooking, so it's about time we start seeing some of what they've been making this whole time because our mouths have been, well, they've been watering for a long time, but now they're dry. You know, our mouths are dry. Start feeding us. Start drip feeding us something. So starting the season off extremely strong is very important because we all know what happened at the beginning of season two. We got a battle pass. We didn't get a character on day one. We didn't get a stage on day one. We got nothing on day one. So season three, you need to do better. The second thing they need to do for season three is go back to consistent update schedules again. And, you know, I'm I'm even okay. I would be I'd be fine even if an update dropped once a month and the update would include new content, whether it would be a new character for the month. Even if we, if Multiverses was able to drop one character a month, that's so much better than one character in November and then nothing until the end of March. Like, that, come on, that's so much better. But they need to go back to those consistent updates. One update a month where they drop the new content, the the patch notes for the for the month, whatever it might be, the new update, the new event if they have one going, drop everything once. Go back to being very consistent with these updates, it, even if it's not every two weeks. Like I said, even if it's just one week, that's still better than nothing, and we know when to kind of look for something. Sure, something crazy might pop up, and they might need to, say, disable ranked mode for whatever reason because uh, it crashes your game for whatever reason. So if that happens, fine. But, like, make your updates, you know, a massive one. Make it an event, so to speak, to look forward to. Like, oh, it's the beginning of the new month. That means we're getting a brand new update within the first week, and it should be a good one. Item number three that they need to really do is make your character announcements seem important. Can we be honest? These little... I like the little teasers that they do. Those are fine. But when the character gets announced, they announce it, like, the day of. They show the new character the day that he drops, or she drops, or whoever the character might be. No. Do it... A week in advance, build up the hype to the new character. That's what Smash Bros. does so well. They let you see the character in advance before it comes out. That's what Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl did pretty well when they did their character showcases. Those were phenomenal. You got to see how the character acts and plays. Do that before the day the character drops. So make those characters seem important because if they start to seem important, more people will say, hey, a multiverse has a new character announcement. I probably need to at least check it out to see who it is. Item number four. Please listen to the players about their feedback from the battle pass progression. Now, who remembers the beginning of season two? Remember the patch notes? I'm going to paraphrase. I don't have them in front of me, but it was along the lines of, hey, we heard the players feedback about the battle pass, so we're going to make it more engaging and more rewarding. What did they do? They made it one of the grindiest battle passes in the history of gaming. Nobody was excited. Nobody was thrilled. Nobody was happy with Season 2 Battle Pass. And, you know, take out the rewards. We're not even talking about that. No, we're talking about the time it took to complete the Battle Pass. It was so bad that the devs, we all know the story, the devs had to extend the season by a month and a half. 
yeah, so please listen to the players about the battle pass progression. Number five, get back to being communicative and engaging with the community. That was one of the earliest things multiverses did right. Tony and his team were able to answer questions and they were in interacting on Twitter or Discord or wherever it might be. They were interacting with the community. They were letting us know what's going on, you know, to the best of their ability, what they could let us know. They need to go back to doing that. It, I miss seeing retweets from, you know, uh, I, do they still do that make it rain dog thing? Are those tournaments still a thing? I don't even know. I haven't seen that pop up on my timeline ever. So it'd be great to see if they could get back to doing more engaging with the community. And I think once new content starts to, you know, roll out, I think they will get back to that. So, you know, it is something they need to hopefully do. Next up, number six, please give us a new game mode. You know, at some point, it doesn't have to be day one, you know, just at some point during season three, give us a new game mode. And I'm going to refer to the long awaited guild mode that we've known about since the original reveal trailer for multiverses get re get ready for this november of 2021 we've known guild mode has been a thing since then and it's still grayed out on our main menu screen so how about that how about we get guild mode for season three something brand new to look forward to a new way to kind of play the game if you will what we still know like nothing about guild mode besides what maybe a couple data miners have kind of told us you know, throughout the months or years since uh, we've been getting information. So, yes, a new game mode, guild mode would be perfect and a, a great way to bring in new players or some lapsed players, if you will. So, yeah, new game mode, please. Number seven, perks. Specifically, give us some new perks. We haven't gotten a new perk since, what, the game... The beta dropped? Was that in July? Or did we get the uh, the new perk in August? Either way, how many months has it been since we've gotten a new perk? So give us some new perks. I'm talking about secondary perks, not like a new... Uh, even if they wanted to go with some new uh, primary perks for each individual character, that's fine too. But just new perks in general. Heck, we could even bump it up to buffing some of the weaker perks. And some of the ones that come to mind are the damaging ones, uh, the attacking ones that only deal or increase your damage by 5%. Let's face it, if you do the math, those perks for the life of a game that you do hardly add up to anything significant. They might as well, you might as well just leave the space empty instead of adding those perks. So they did something recently in one of the last couple patches where they buffed, I believe it was the snowball perk. Um, I forget, I think it's, I think default used to be 7%, but now default is 10%. And if it's stacked, I believe it's 20%. I don't have the numbers in front of me, so I might be off on that, but they need to do that for the other ones as well. Increase the base. 5% is absolutely nothing, and it's worthless. So those are just a few perks that come to mind, but yeah, let's get some new perks going. Let's, uh, let's shake things up a little bit, shall we? Number eight, the events. Please continue improving them. Now, I will give credit where credit is due. The events that we've gotten, the Halloween one, we got the holiday one, and then we're, I, I mean, technically we had the, the Chinese New Year one, but... That wasn't one of their big events. You know what I mean? But then we just, uh, we're just just co coming off of the Valentine Neon. Each of those events have been better and better, and they've been improving on that. And I want to see that continue. The first Halloween event, very grindy, very grindy. The holiday one, they added login bonuses. They added new uh, challenges, one per day, where you can do the challenge and then you get at the time, it was holiday cookies, so you got more. There's more ways to earn cookies, which was fantastic. And then the, the Valentine Neon one, they added even more rewards. I believe there's two pages of rewards for the uh, the Valentine hearts uh, that you collected. So do, th do more things like that. Do more challenges. Do more ways to get cookies or, or well, whatever the new event currency is. Continue improving upon that because that is the events 
Sure, maybe some of the skins are just recolors, but if we can get them kind of fast and we don't have to wait the entirety of the whole event before we get one reward, then, you know, it'll be a little bit more worth it and people will want to log on and actually play and do the event and stuff. So just keep improving those events. They've been doing good so far and, uh, I, you know, I got uh, I got faith in, in them to continue doing it. Item number nine. This one is a little bit more on the wish list sort of things, <laughs> but revamped prices of cosmetics, please. Some of your cosmetics are just way too pricey. And I'm talking about like, if you compare a legendary costume, which costs 2000 gleamium. So I, that's 20 us dollars. And then you compare it to a legendary ring out, which I believe we only have one of, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, that legendary ring out cost 1800 gleamium. Yeah, a ring out shouldn't cost almost as much as a costume. I get ring outs are, you'll see them a lot, but ah, it just seems a little too pricey. And it's not just costumes compared to ring outs. It's costumes in general, costumes that are just reskins and you're going to charge me eight bucks for it. Nah, you should charge me like two bucks or three bucks at the most for it. Like they need to, they need to hopefully get together with some sort of department to come to an agreement that, yeah, these skins, they're not worth as much as we think they are, but I get it. They're also a business at the same time. They got to make their money, but still the prices of a lot of the cosmetics do need to be adjusted. And the last thing, I think this one goes without saying, but server improvements, number 10, it's, you know, we all want it. Uh, we all have those games where we're teleporting around the stage <laughs> here over on the left one second. And all of a sudden you, you got KO'd over on the right hand side of the stage. And you're like, I wasn't even over there. How did I die? So just server improvements in general. I know that they've said, I think it was Nick cat that said it, that they are working on it. I believe Tony's mentioned it in the past too. So server improvements in general just makes the game feel better. The player base feels a little bit more in a healthy state, so and a healthy mindset too. So there you go. There's 10 things multiverses needs to do for season three.